connections made from that first scrimmage uh, that we made a point of emphasis um, and got to see today. We practiced a lot of uh, young players today, kind of our last be able to take a look before we go into our mock game week. So we kind of forced the issues there. And it's gonna, I can't wait to get in here and watch that film. I thought the things that stood out to me, one, uh, you know, are the amount of tackling that we have done in this camp is really paying off. I thought defensively there was a ton of great open field tackles uh, that happened, especially in the secondary. And then I thought defensively we had given up a bunch of explosives of plays in the first scrimmage, um, and that was limited a lot more today. Um, from a quarterback standpoint, the one thing that I did see that jumped out to me uh, that was better was their sense of urgency to either get rid of the ball or break contain and be able to keep the ball alive. They were taking sacks in, that, in the first scrimmage, and the time clock, I thought, sped up today. I uh, wish there was more explosive plays, but I thought defensively they did a nice job. Um, from a young person standpoint, I thought Devin Williams really took a stride forward, made a couple uh, big big uh, plays for us down the stretch there. It was good to see him do that, and I was proud. It was really neat to have Michael Brown back out here, get through a camp, look healthy, and today uh, was excellent, especially on some long field goals, so that was nice to see. Um, from an injury standpoint, uh, from an injury standpoint, uh, we had Caleb Trimbley. Uh, we pulled late with a, an ankle, uh, just think it's slight. Levi, we pulled uh, with just Levi Jones uh, with a hand. We'll see where that's at. Uh, Chuma, we pulled uh, with a nagging hip. I don't think it's anything serious. And uh, everybody else is status quo. With that, I'll uh, answer any questions that you have. Is Almond Ra the leader to be the punt returner right now? Uh, I think right now, as you saw out there today, Jane went out there first, and then Amon Ross second, and then Tyler Vaughn third. Both of all three of them have looked um, as uh, solid catching the ball. Um, I think Amon Ra has been doing a really good job in camp. That's why he's been thrust into the mold as a young person. Um, that doesn't happen very often, but he is he is a guy that uh, is one, uh, we have trust in catching the ball, but two, is doing things after that catch, uh, which is nice to see, and he's made good decisions. So he's definitely in the mix. We got one week to go prior to, prior to the game, but he's in the mix with those other two right now. Levi Jones has been kind of in and out of practice throughout <laughs> camp, but what did you think about him today? Yeah, you know, I was really excited for him. He got two series and played really well. He was one of the guys in the open field. He makes two tackles on Stephen Carr, which is a very hard thing to do out in open space. Uh, it was extremely impressive. Um, you know, he's been battling a little bit of an ankle, uh, but really wanted to go today. Gosh, he showed it. I mean, he, he looked healthy and he looked explosive, you know, and to be able to have him and uh, John Houston in that Will Backer position, man, uh, it makes you feel good because you got two explosive athletes uh, that can make plays and contribute. And I thought Levi played really well. Uh, I'll check the tape, but it felt like he played fast today. When you play with a lot of younger guys, do you just want to see more reps, or is there something specific that you want to see from those? No, guys? you know, I, I've seen enough reps on Marvell Tell. I, I know, I know who he is, but I need to see Bubba and Isaiah Polamau and uh, Talanoa Fanga and C.J. Pollock. Um, you know, I needed to see exactly where they're at in a real life scrimmage. So, you know, we backed off some of the older veterans that are seniors that have been three year players, and we really needed to see okay, who can realistically contribute you know, in that opening game. Um, and that's what part of this scrimmage was about, is to thrust those younger players to the forefront um, that are first, second, third year players that this is their opportunity to show if they can contribute. There weren't as many explosive plays quarterback-wise in the mm -hmm. scrimmage compared to the last one. Yeah. Was that just them seeing stuff shorter and shorter? Or was it by design? No, I, I really thought defensively, you know, we made a point of emphasis. You saw that first scrimmage. That was one something that really stood out. As a matter of fact, Dan made a great, a great stat the other day on it. You know, and that's something that I think defensively they took to heart and uh, and they did a nice job today um, you know like I told offensively you know some days you're gonna have to grind it out some days just it, defense is playing really well and the run game's got to go and you got to move the sticks and all of a sudden sometimes it's gonna be three four play drives and some of them you're gonna need 14 play drives and you got to find ways to move the sticks um, but I, I thought defensively they made a nice jump from game one to game two limiting those explosive plays what is the next step for Gavin Williams? 
Um, for me, is the playbook. Uh, you know, there's a. I know he made a mistake or two out here today because I could hear I could hear T over the headset fussing. Uh, but that's the beauty of being out here, and making making the coaches get off and be up in the stands, and you know, just to see the reality of where they're at. And you could see his natural play ability. You know, he made two big plays in this scrimmage. Now it's just not having to yell, "Hey, get lined up here or do this or that." You know, once the playbook hits and the light clicks on. Um, you know, I, I remember some guys it happens fast. You know, Woody it happened game one. You know, Nelly it happened, I think the Oregon game. If I remember, I think that was game five. And then the light just clicked on and he went from there. You know, it always happens different for each and every guy. Is it going to take uh, the mock game to make you uh, decide? Uh, at this point with the quarterback in situation? Oh, you know, I'd like to go in and evaluate this tape and see um, uh, see where it's at. I didn't think that, you know, I thought every quarterback made some good decisions about forcing the ball, but breaking contain. But I'd like to go in there and evaluate the tape and, and see where we're at. Uh, uh, my gut tells me it's going to take one more week, but I'm going to eval the tape. What about Jack Sears? What did you think of him today? Um, I, I thought a couple times of being able to break and tame, you saw him make a couple first downs with his feet. That's what I wasn't feeling in the first preseason game was they were just staying stagnant in the pocket. They weren't releasing the ball or using the weapons that they have. Um, even, even I tell you what, even JT, uh, who still has great athleticism, I thought did a nice job of breaking contain too. All three of them today didn't take sacks. They didn't stay back there and just hold on to the ball. That clock went off and they said, I got to get out. I either got to throw this ball or I got to break contain and keep this play alive. And that that's going to help me sleep better tonight. Uh, there are probably some mistakes, and we probably missed a couple reads, but from them playing real live football, it felt more live today. Is JT showing you more than maybe you expected in the ability to break contain and, uh, and, and yeah. throw on the run? And well, he did it the other day, Dan, too, I, I thought in the two minute drill. Um, you didn't see him break contain, but being able to step up in the pocket and being able to keep the ball alive, you know, he, he reminds me a lot of uh, where Cody was, in my opinion. Uh, Cody was a tremendous pocket presence quarterback, um, and and so is JT. He can feel pressure, and and don't let don't fall asleep on his athleticism because he can move. Um, the other the other two do a good job in the run game, um, but gosh dang, I tell you what, JT is a, is is an adequate athlete. There's no question. Let's do one more. I know you wanted to include the two minute drill, like you said yesterday. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason why you cut it out? Yeah, we ran out of we ran out of offensive tackle bodies. Uh, yeah. I was I was running low, and it wasn't going to be a, a good simulation. And so I, sometimes you have to adjust on the run uh, as a head coach and don't get stubborn. Uh, but uh, we lost a couple offensive tackles down the stretch there. I didn't think it was going to be able to get an honest evaluation. So uh, we'll be able to do it this week coming up. All right, thank okay. you. Guys.